Hello guys, welcome to another video. Um, and in this video, we are going to talk about Flex VPN and what Flex is all about. Um, well, first, if you could, if you could imagine, the first time I, I saw Flex VPN over here, I thought just it was like another version of how to implement like a VPN. I thought it was going to be like a like another IPsec or another another Ike or like another way to deploy um, a VPN, um, but it was not. I was really shocked of what um, Cisco did, but it was really it was really smart on their part. Um, so this is on the implementing Cisco Secure Mobility Solutions, and this is for the CCMP security SIM, um, the SIMOS topic, Flex VPN. So let's go ahead and start with this PowerPoint that I put together for you guys. Very nice. So Flex VPN, what is Flex VPN? Huh? Just a cool name? Let's figure it out. Well, what is Flex VPN? Well, Flex Flexible VPN is a common umbrella for all Ike version 2 IPsec VPNs deployed on iOS routers. Okay? Remember that only on iOS routers. It is not for ASAs. It is only a way of how to deploy or all Ike version 2 IPsec VPNs tunnel on iOS routers. It has the technical benefits, but it also it's more like a marketing term, right? And what Cisco did was they came out um, with a common configuration template for all VPN types, which is really nice. So you don't have to remember a different VPN configuration for every single one out there. Uh, so you don't have to remember like a different one for GetVPN, DMVPN, SVT, DVTI, um, and all of them. Um, and SSL and all of them. So it is just a common configuration template for all VPN types. That's what FlexVPN is. So you no longer need 50 plus templates of VPN configurations. Uh, a feature parity between all VPN types. So there's no more restrictions. And they are based on each VPN type. So there's like an additional extra configuration templates are required for like different ones, but it is not as big as configuring as having 50 different templates for each VPN configuration. Okay. So that is what FlexVPN is. The first time I, I was doing my research on it, I'm like, okay, I have to learn another way to um, uh, another configuration, another VPN configuration. But no, it is just a like a template for all the VPN types, but only for Ike version 2 and only on iOS routers. So remember that for the XM. So now I'm going to go through how this um, FlexVPN works and how it is all put together. And the first, and, and I'm calling this the building blocks. And the first one is a proposal. And in Ike version two proposal, it is mandatory. Um, in Ike version one, this was the ISACAM policy. So basically, the proposal is just the ISACAM policy. Um, it is defined with a name and not a number, which is is better because that way you can differentiate. So if we have three different tunnels on one router, now you can differentiate these tunnels going to um router three of these tunnels are going to router four so you can have a name and not a number uh, and there's a default that exists and you can the configuration that i'm going to do next i'm going to be keeping the default um, and i can show you how to edit it and all that good stuff as well and the i version to proposal configuration so this is how it is you have to configure um the encryption so this is what you configure on the Ike version 2 proposal. Uh, you need to configure the encryption, um, which you can use multiple entries can be configured. Um, so you can have one entry, and the first entry that you should have if you're going to edit or you're going to create your own proposal, um, you want to have it from the highest um, encryption to the lower encryption. So you want to have AES and then 3D, uh, 3DES and then DES. So you can have multiple entries. And for integrity, you can have SHA-2, SHA-1, and MD5. For DP Hellman, you can have all the group numbers from higher to lower. Because what's going to happen is, since we have different entries, 
what's going to happen is that if this um, router has multiple entries and it wants to make a or create a tunnel with the other router and the other router does not have the highest um, encryption is going to use then the other one the second highest and for integrity the same thing for um, hashing algorithms if it's the highest is not there then it's going to use the second one the second highest one and I'm going to show you guys when I do the configuration so you guys can see what I'm talking about better um, and for IX2 proposal no longer contains the authentication method so we don't need to do a pre-share key or, or tell it whatever we're going to or if you're going to use a certificate, we're not going to use that there. And the security association lifetime is not there either. And now um, we also need to create a policy. Um, Ike version two needs a proposal attached to this policy and a default one exists. So if you do not edit the uh, proposal and the default proposal and the default policy, it is already attached with one another um, so you don't really need you can you can create your own one if you want or you can leave the the default there which is fine as well and the scope is to control which proposal is used um, for the IPsec VPN tunnel so the policy is the one that mandates which proposal we are going to be using and for the IQ version 2 policy configuration um, you need to have the Ike version 2 proposal attached, like I said before. Uh, you need to have, or you don't need to have, the, uh, there is an option an optional for the terminating local address for the IPsec VPN. It's optional. You could have the, um, I believe this is called the FVRF, which is a front door, front, I think it's front VRF. And this is when we are isolating the transport network, usually internet facing. Um, and this allows this allows allowed allows us to configure the default route that won't interfere with the routing in our global table. Uh, and the proposals are attached to the policy. So let's say that if you have one proposal, if you have proposal one is attached to policy one, and the peer choose um, policy one. The peer will use the proposal one because it is the one attached to the policy. So this is how it works. The policy mandates which um, proposal you are going to be using. So remember that. And now for the key ring, um, there's, that's another block that you need to configure. And this one, you need to do it manually. You don't, you, there's not a default for the key ring because you need to create your own key ring, right? Um, and it is mandatory. If you're going to use a pre-share key authentication um, in Ike version one, this was the ISAC I'm carrying, and it is used to define the pre-share keys. Simple enough. And here's the uh, Ike version two carrying key ring configuration. Uh, you need to configure the two keys. Remember, like I said on my video before, that you could use the uh, you, you could do the command of pre-share key used by the local peer and also the pre-share key used by the remote peer um, because you, uh, for Ike version 2, you could have isometric keys and for the local, it's going to have a different um, uh, pre-share key as the remote. So we're going to use asymmetric keys because we're using two different keys. And if the local is ABC and the remote is 1, 2, 3 on the other side, you need to have the local one two three and the remote ABC. So you just, you just need to f switch it uh, so they can authenticate uh, with Ike version two. And another one is the um, Ike version two profile, and this is also mandatory. Um, in Ike version one, this was the um, ISACAM profile, and it's used to define local slash remote Ike version two identities. Um, Actually, it's used to define both of them, the local and the remote Ike version 2 identities. Um, and it needs the Ike version 2 key ring attached. So this key ring, whenever we configure the pre the pressure key for the local peer and for the remote peer, then we are going to attach this to the Ike version 2 profile. And the way that you configure this, you're going first to attach the um, Ike version 2 key ring if pressure key is used not sued but used 
um, and you are going to define the PKI trust point if a PKI authentication is used here. So either uh, if you're using a pre-share key, you're going to um, attach the uh, key ring here. But if you are going to use a PKI, we are going to define the PKI trust point. Um, and also we are going to configure the local remote, the local and the remote peer authentication type, which is mandatory. And we are also going to configure the local and the remote Ike version 2 ID or identities like we said before. And this is how you do it. So you're going to do from the configuration command on your Cisco iOS because FlexVPN is only for iOS routers. You're going to issue the crypto Ike version 2 key ring and then you're going to give it a name as you can see right here, right here. And then you're going to say that you're going to configure peer router 2 which is going to be the remote router and you're going to give it the address of the remote router that you're going to configure and the pre-share key the local pre-share key which is the local of this router that we are going that we are configuring which is router one and then the pre-share key for the remote um, for the remote router and we are going to give it this key which is r2 and then on the other side you're going to configure peer router one and you're going to give it the IP address of router one. The pre-share key is going to be R2 key, and the remote key is going to be R1 key. So you just need to switch those names. And then to configure um, the Ike version 2 profile, this is how you um, do it. You need to issue the crypto key, the crypto Ike version 2 profile, and then you give it a name. And the name is per IPsec VPN tunnel. So for, for every Ike, for every IPsec VPN tunnel, you need to create your own um, Ike version 2 profile. But you could use you keep you could keep using the same Ike version 2 key ring for any Ike version 2 profile. And then after you do that, after you create the profile, you need to do authentication local pre-share key and authentication remote also are going to be the same pre-share key, and then you're going to attach the key ring local, which is called Ike version 2 underscore key ring, you can give it any name. As you can see right here, this one was the key ring that we created. So we attach it over here to the Ike version 2 profile. And then we are going to say a match identity remote address, which is going to be the remote address of that um, iOS router for that one, that one, that two. And then we are going to do identity local address, which is the, um, the identity of our local um, iOS router. And also uh, the IPsec, um, the IPsec uh, configuration remains almost the same, just in like, just like in the case of Ike version one IPsec VPN, it is identical. The only main difference between uh, Ike version one and Ike version two is that you have to attach the Ike version two profile at the crypto map or the IPsec profile level, and we are going to be using IPsec profile level because that's what um, Cisco tells you to do. They don't want you to be using crypto map unless you are going to be um, configuring a router with the uh, with the ASA. If the, it is between two routers, you want to use the um, IPsec profile. And if you want to, um, if you want ESP with integrity or encryption, you have algorithms that you can use, um, like in Ike version one, where you could use um, DES, triple DES, or AES. You could also use regular hashing algorithms, which is MD5, SHA-1, and SHA-2. And you could also use um, next generation algorithms. So if you want to use ESP with integrity and or encryption, you could use these next generation algorithm, algorithms like AES GMC. GMC stands for Galois Counter Mode. And it has the built-in integrity and data authentication. Or if you want to use the other algorithm, which is AES GMAC, you could also do that with Ike version 2. Uh, and GMAX stands for Galois Message Authentication Code, and it, offers, and it only offers integrity in data authentication. And here is how you can um, create the IPsec profile. Um, and it is there is a default one, so you can use the default one, which we are going to be using on the Cisco on the next video that I'm going to be configuring at SVTI um, VPN IPsec tunnel. Um, and this is how you do it. You just issue this command, which is crypto IPsec profile default. Since we are going to edit the default, all we're going to do is to attach the Ike version 2 profile, which was router 1 to router 2, which was the one that we created over here.
with the Crypto Ike version 2 profile, router 1 to router 2. There it is. And here are some show commands that you could do. So if you want to verify the Ike version 2 configuration verification, uh, what you could do is you could do the show crypto Ike v2 policy. You could also do the show crypto Ike version 2 proposal. So you can see the policy, what you have configured there to see the verification and the proposal. And also if you want to see the uh, curing verification, if you want to verify the curing configuration, uh, what you could do is you can do a show running config, um, section crypto Ike v2 curing. And you could also, if you want to um, see the verification for the profile configuration, you could do the show crypto Ike version 2 profile. And for IPC configuration verification, you could use the same one for, for the one that we use in Ike version 1, which is show crypto IPsec transform set and show crypto IPsec profile. And to verify Ike version 2 sessions, all you have to do is replace the ISAC camp and put Ike version 2 right here. So you, you want to do show crypto Ike version 2 SA or show crypto Ike version 2 SA detail. And there are more commands that you could use. So if you want to see the IPsec session, you could do a show crypto IPsec SA, show crypto IPsec SA detail. And if you want to verify both of them, Ike version 2 and IPsec SA, you could issue uh, one of these two commands, either show crypto Ike version 2 session, show crypto Ike version 2 or Ike v2 SA session detail, not detail, but detail. And if you want to troubleshoot the, uh, the, Ike, vers the Ike v2 SA, you could do a debug crypto Ike v2 or a debug crypto Ike v2 packet. And if you want to troubleshoot the IPsec SA, you could issue the command, the, show, the debug command of debug crypto IPsec or debug crypto IPsec estates. And this is all for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on FlexVPN and how FlexVPN um, works and how you could configure it. And I also show you some show commands and also I show you some configuration commands and how to configure this FlexVPN that could be used for all VPN configuration. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and follow me on Twitter uh, CCNA Daily Tips. Um, if you don't have a Twitter account, go ahead and create one and then follow me. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.